Hello everybody, this is John Brewer. I'm back again with the latest update to Space Engineers. Uh, as many of you know, yesterday we got the timer block, which is a uh, really interesting new block that allows us to set a sequence of actions, as we would on the toolbar, at some point in the future. Uh, by default, I think 30 seconds or so. Now, the really interesting thing that this let me do uh, was evolve the concept of the drone that I posted about a few days ago. Or not the drone, the, uh, the self-guided uh, sensor platform that would follow you around and build an actual ship-to-ship -ship missile. Now this, uh, this is the missile bank itself. You can see it's been added to the red ship here. I wanted to create something that everybody was familiar with, or modify the uh, platform that everybody's familiar with so you can see what the changes are. Now there are two missiles here. Uh, one forward, one a little further back amidships. And these are held on to the red ship with these merger blocks here. Uh, that's why these are large ships. Uh, the missiles are large ships, rather, uh, as opposed to small ships, is because I didn't want to finagle around with the uh, rotor hack to get small ship missiles available. And really, the large ship warheads pack a much, much larger punch than the uh, small ships do. Anyways, let's go and see the changes I made inside the ship uh, to the missile control room. I went and I refit the passenger compartment right behind the bridge here to have the missile areas. Now, here we have the fire sequencers. These are timing blocks. Now, the real advantage to timing blocks that I was able to use here, besides the uh, the technical problems that I'll describe with the uh, missiles themselves, are these allow me to group together complex actions, like turning things on, turning other things off, uh, whereas things like the sensor block and uh, the button panel over here only allow you to take one action or one group of actions uh, all at the same time. The uh, timer block actually allows you to take a whole bunch of uh, different things. All of the actions that you set up with the timer block here will occur simultaneously. So, the reason that the timer block is essential for uh, these ship-to-ship -ship missiles is because of uh, what I believe uh, submariners used to call circle runs. Basically, if you just launched one of these ship-to-ship -ship missiles and immediately turned on its uh, seeking warhead, it would just detect the nearest large ship, which would, generally speaking, be you, and it would turn right around and it would hit you and it would blow you up and life would be sad for you. What the timer blocks do is they allow me to actually uh, delay the activation of the seeker until the missile has had time to clear the ship. Oh, let me just open up the control panel here. You can see when, uh, when we actually initiate the launch of a missile, we turn on its engines, uh, we start a timer that will turn on the uh, seeker warhead 20 seconds later, we let go of the merge block, we turn off the launch indicator lights, and we switch the missile over to battery power. Each one has an onboard battery, which is more than enough power for its expected flight time. So, uh, the other thing that I did on this, uh, on this particular ship was I put the missiles on rotating turrets, which I can control, and which I will... Uh, use cameras on and see I can actually rotate each missile independently to target it at whatever I want to hit. In this case, in a minute, we're going to blow up that blue ship over there. And you can see I actually only have 
uh, yaw control here. I can't pitch the missiles up and down, but that's okay because they have seekers on them. So we're going to do all right, I think. So that was me targeting uh, missile number two, which was the aft missile there. Now I'll go... I actually tried to hook the remote controls up to a timer two so that I could push a button on the uh, button panel here and get the opportunity to uh, look through the camera while also controlling the missile that I wanted. Uh, unfortunately, that did not work out, so I'm not sure exactly why I was not able to do that. Uh, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Control. And then view the missile one camera. And there. Now I'm controlling the forward missile turret. And these are locked um, because there is a configuration of these uh, missile turrets rotating it that will actually allow the warheads to collide. Uh, so I've restricted the rotors themselves. So now we have both missiles pointing off the port side of the ship, uh, ready to engage that blue ship out there. Yep, you can see them both pointing off with their warheads on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, or go back into the missile launch control room. And I'm actually going to push the fire buttons on these missiles. Now I do have to stagger their launching because, like I said, they search for large ships and the missiles are themselves large ships. So if I don't adequately space the launch, there are the launch warning lights flashing for Missile 1. Uh, if I don't adequately space the launch between Missile 1 and Missile 2, uh, they will lock onto each other and they will just fly into each other and destroy each other, and that is not particularly helpful. So there's Missile 1 coming off the front of the ship, and you can see the uh, flashing block there. That is the timer block that will activate the seekers uh, the sensor package that we covered uh, in the last video that will allow the ship to actually find that blue ship and destroy it. Now, while Missile 1 is flying out to that ship, I'm going to fire Missile 2 because I think that's plenty, plenty of spacing uh, for the two of them. Again, uh, even with large ships, you're limited to a 50 meter uh, cone for your uh, sensors. So it really is not very far uh, with these large ships. Okay, missile is getting out to the blue ship. Up oh, and there it is. It's locked on. It's going for it. It's going to crash its warhead. Oh, yep. There we go. Hit the engine section. That actually... Okay, I don't think it quite broke the spine of the uh, blue ship there. But here goes Missile 2, and I'm actually going to go out there and see if I can get a better whoop, better shot of uh, Missile 2 impacting. Yep, their Missile 2 has got its lock. It's acquired the target and it's going in. Uh, it actually looks like it's going to hit just right about where Missile 1 hit. And there we go. And it... between the two of them, I think that they've snapped this ship in half. Uh, did they actually make it all the way? Yes, they did. Yep. They broke the spine of the uh, blue ship here. It is now, in fact, two different pieces. And that right there would take a while to repair. Now, this is obviously an early generation uh, weapon right now. It's probably not nearly as effective as, you know, just attacking with missiles and guns and whatnot. And it's certainly pretty ugly. I didn't put any cladding on the uh, missiles so that people watching this video could see how they work. But they're really neat. Um, it really feels like an advanced weapon system that you're able to construct 
out of the pieces in the game that uh, is conceivably useful. Uh, certainly having the capability to deliver those large ship warheads at range is uh, pretty devastating. So I look forward to seeing what uh, other people do with this kind of technology. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I have to show you today. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, you enjoyed this little demonstration. If there's sufficient interest, I'll make a tutorial video on exactly how I built these uh, particular missiles. Until then, I'm John Brewer. Come and learn from my mistakes.